I'm thinking about putting a folk segment in my act, and I'd like to hire you. I said, well, I have been thinking about moving on from the Chad Mitchell Trio. In fact, my friend Barry McGuire invited me to be part of the new Christie Minstrels. <laughs> I even had my picture taken with them for the cover of TV Guide. <laughs> but he said, you know, that's too big a group. You'd get Barry in the group that big. How much is Chad Mitchell paying you anyway? I told him. He said, I'll double it. Sounds really good. <laughs> I started working for Bobby Darren, and it was really an easy gig, because he'd come out and do Splish Splash and his rock and roll hits for about 15 minutes. He'd bring me on, and we'd do some folk songs and kind of stand-up comedy act. I was a straight man for his comedy act. And then I was free to go, and he'd go out and do Mac the Knife and his Rex and Archer style stuff. And I used to like to walk up and down the street in Vegas and take him to different shows. And one, one I liked was Don Rickles. <laughs> One night I walked in the Don Rickles show, it was already in progress, and he saw me come in the door and he said, Hey, there's this kid here, he works for Bobby Darren, he walks around the baby, he's going, I'm a star, I'm a star! <laughs> wow, Don Rickles knew who I was, I felt like I was a star. <laughs> I know you'd like to take off after the set, but stick around tonight. My wife is coming over with this young actor. In fact, it's his first movie, Tammy and the Doctor. So I stuck around. Sandra D showed up with Peter Fonda. And Peter and I got to talk, and it turned out we had a mutual friend. One of his best friends in college had been one of my best friends in high school. And uh, we kept in touch over the years. And we both lived in the same part of the Hollywood Hills, and we go over to each other's houses. One time we decided to buy CB Ringo's, they were kind of new back then. And they were big as a bread box and had orange tubes in them, and you had to solder stuff to make them go. And I wasn't very good at soldering, it kept burning my fingers, but Peter Fonda taught me how to solder. So we finally got these things working with the antennas on our cars, and we drive around the Hollywood Hills pretending to be airplane pilots. <laughs> This is Ridge 242 Fox Trot, the request for run runway one nighter. <laughs> that was a tough one. Well, so Peter and I were friends and we kept in touch over the years. And when he was doing his low budget motorcycle movie, <laughs> he put some rock and roll records on the soundtrack, and two of them were bird songs. But he wanted one song that was written just for the movie, like a theme song. So he flew to New York and screened the movie for Bob Dylan. Bob would write him a song. And Bob wrote on some notes on a little paper napkin. He said, Forgive this to McGuinn, he'll know what to do with it. <laughs> so Peter got the napkin, got back on the plane, and flew out to LA, and came over to my house. And this napkin was like the Holy Grail. <laughs> he presented it to me like, Oh, what's it have? <laughs> <laughs> it said, The river flows, it flows to the sea. Wherever that river goes, that's what I want. So I got my guitar up, made up a tune for it, and wrote the second verse, and we called it the Ballad of Easy Rider. Woo! Woo! The river flows. 